this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, August 26, 2024, here for my weekly cross-stitching update. Smokey's in here with me for now. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. She actually wanted to be in here today, which is fun. So, um, first off, I have the winners of the giveaway from two weeks ago, celebrating 14,000 subscribers. So there were 14 winners. I actually had to redraw three of them because they were the same person, which is kind of crazy, but um, I wanted to make sure 14 people won because that's fun. So <laughs> so I will uh, list them off and then um, I'll put on the screen maybe your YouTube handle in case I try to look up the actual name um, some, some of the times, but sometimes the handle is different than the name. So here we go. So the person who won the set of little patterns is Lisa Clark. So congratulations, Lisa. And the Foxtrot quilt pattern goes to Enchanting Stitching. So congratulations. Beechwood goes to Jane Houston. Chantilly goes to JV2000. So I'm going to go ahead and say the the full name of your handle because it's JV could be anybody. <laughs> Sun drops and star flowers. This one goes to Karen MR or Ms. Karen MR, which is fun. Morning gatherings. This one goes to Holly S. Hash Weitzer was your YouTube handle. Crows in the corn goes to Linda Faisatola. I might be able to find your address, but all of you, you can go ahead and email me your address at stitchinmommy7 at gmail.com. Or you can find me on private message on Etsy or Instagram as well. So uh, winter time goes to Lisa Hudson. Congratulations. Bunny goes to Amy Wood. Springtime ornaments goes to Caroline Fletcher. Quilted Scarecrow goes to Nanette McDougal Dykes. Congratulations. I might have your address too. Uh, Be My Honey goes to Helen Hanny. The Beehive House goes to Ms. Real Yankee. And the Topiary House goes to Jill the Pajama Stitcher. So yay, all 14 of you. <laughs> so congratulations. You can go ahead, yeah, email me stitchinmommy7 at gmail.com or private message me Instagram or Etsy and let me know your mailing address and I will try to get those out to you forthwith. <laughs> Hopefully I can mail them all from home. If they're bigger or international, I might have to go to the post office. So that affects the time definitely, but that that's fun. So congratulations, everybody. She's way, way down here, practically falling off the bed. <laughs> so I can't really show you, but that's okay. Just trust me, she's cute. Okay, so travel stitching. I worked on temperature turtles yesterday on Sunday, which is my tradition. This is one of my temperature pieces. Hopefully now that the fall is here, I'll have time to work on my next temperature design. That would be fun. Here's where this one is now. Working on the August turtle and seven more patches. All seven of them were a different color, so that takes a little bit longer. <laughs> and they're the bigger patches in the center, but we had a few, day, a few days here at the end of last week that were in the 80s, which was kind of cool, literally. <laughs> it, but I think it's, it's gonna be back into the 90s this week, but I don't know how many more hundreds we'll get this year. It seems like things are already starting to feel a little bit like fall, which is, which is wonderful, so. Short summer, short and sweet. Just a few hot days, so not too bad. Um, my main travel piece, Cats and Hearts. I didn't get as much time as I would have wanted. Still sorting out the pickup schedules. This is Cats and Hearts August by Kitty and Me Designs. You can find all of the heart designs on her Etsy shop. That's where I found mine. And some of Kitty and Me's designs are elsewhere. 
but the only place I could find the heart ones were on was on Etsy on her in her Etsy shop so I've had a, I had a couple questions about that at one point so I'm still experimenting with time to work on these because this week I didn't get much but I think if I I'm still still trying a few things to purposefully incorporate some stitching time amongst my pickup time without it being completely um, unnecessary. So we'll see. <laughs> so I got a little bit done this week. Still in the greens. This is These are on 25 count white even weave. One over one full cross. Yes. Maybe some gray. I'm not sure. I maybe just worked on the greens this week. And yeah, go, I'm now on the darkest green, so I did a little bit of the back stitching while I'm while I'm work, filling in the dark green. So I think I've only done a little bit up here and down here because I think I had a small a small piece of thread on the bobbin, so I did just a little bit, and then I'm, I kind of started here. I'm gonna kind of wind my way around depending on you know where where the symbols take me. So that's coming along, albeit slowly. We're going out less than a week left of August. Um, but hopefully, hopefully I can kind of settle in and get a couple, couple larger chunks throughout the week to be able to work on that a little bit more each week. Um, yeah, worst case, I can skip September and pick that one up next year as well. And if, if August keeps taking me a good chunk of the way through September, then I'll just pick up with October. And then next year I can work on May and September and any others I need to skip. <laughs> and uh, that'll work, it'll be fine. Um, I also worked on Flower Teapot by Soda Stitch a little bit while I was chatting with my friend Desiree. And this one is always a joy. I got, um, this is on 32 count Tiki Oasis linen I think by uh, Oak Crown Studios and I was able to do a little bit more blue in the cross stitching and get it to the point where I could backstitch so I did two lengths of backstitch you can tell really firmly here in the pot but then I also did the handle and the spout and, and some of the roses as well so yeah super fun so I'll go back to cross stitching again next time um, in here needs to get filled in and then down here to be able to do some more back stitching. So, super fun. Soda stitches are always a joy because they're bright and colorful and the back stitching is simple and very effective. So, good combination. I did a little bit on Castle Homecoming on Friday when I chatted with my sister. This time it, it felt like I got a little bit more obvious done. Still only one color. I'm working in the dragon, but I'll just do a before and after the dragon because that's all I worked on was that dark green filling that in all around so not a whole lot but I'm thinking I might put it on my in my plans for a day or two um, in September to give it another good chunk beyond just chatting stick chatting time and I'll explain more plans at the end My main pieces this week started out with Lollipop, which was a family piece for my daughter. I like to do two days on each family piece every month to make sure they're seeing consistent progress. And so this is the one for my daughter. And I was a little bit disappointed, not kind of deflated. I think deflated is more the word because I was hoping I'm up here and I knew I had a little few few colors symbols that were going to be the tip of the dragon wing. So I had all these grand excitement, anticipations, expectations that I would be stitching down some of these darker colors. Well, all the ones I got to were like really pale pinks. So they must be like edge colors that are along the edges. There are some that came along here, you know, like eh. it's fine. <laughs> It needs to get done, but it wasn't like the dramatic, super exciting stuff I thought I'd be stitching. It's still good. I did a total of 527 
half stitches in here in August on these two days. So here is where I got to. This is 40 count Verdal, one over one, half cross. So they're very tiny stitches. And I worked here in mainly in the moon. I finished the white, or I think it's 3865 here in the in the moon. This is now the edge of the moon. So I've got some blues that kind of gave it some texture. And see, here's the very tip of the dragon wing, but it's it's just pinks. Got a few pinks that went kind of in here as well, and maybe even some over here, but um, not quite as dramatic as I was hoping. And there was some really pale ones you can see that are like heading down here to be the edge highlight as well. So you can kind of start to see the edge of the wings popping out there, but they're not super obvious yet. I'm still st picking symbols in the temp each 10 by 10 square as I go across the top row. So this 10 by 10 block I think is done now. So the next 10 by 10 block over, we'll have a few new symbols, but again, some of them are one symbol is here and then there's maybe a couple somewhere else. So not a whole lot yet that are stroking down even in that next 10 by 10 square, but that's okay. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Well, maybe I'll show this. This is kind of fun. You can see my carrying of the light pinks. And as since this is 40 count, this looks like it's a really long way, but literally it is probably only an inch. And so because of the size of the fabric, I can carry a little bit farther stitch count than I might normally on a bigger count. But eventually all of that will get stitched over, so I'm not worried about it. I just have to make sure the tension is very good while I'm stitching because I stitch in hand. So if I carry anything like that, it needs to, I need to make sure it's not pulling too tight because then the, the front will start bunching up and we don't want that. So that's fun. I do enjoy working on that one. So that one will come back out again um, next month. And then I worked on those who sing for a couple days. This one is definitely taking longer than I want it to. <laughs> There's a lot of stitching down here and I knew that. Um, I was kind of somewhat hopeful I could get this done in August, but I'm pretty sure I can't. It's a little bit too much to go. I also think I need a little bit of a break from it. So I'm gonna give it another couple days this week, but then next month, I'm gonna do a, some focus time on Castle Homecoming and Shine Bright Sampler to, to try to work on those a little bit more and save this for October. I think if I finish this in October, that could actually be kind of fun because it was started for Colette, the Highway Stitcher's birthday stitch along several years ago. <laughs> and it's her birthday is in October and it was started on her birthday. So might as well finish it in October. So I'll give it a couple more days here this week, but it is got a lot of stitching left relatively speaking so here is the whole thing and i'll do the before and after of what i worked on um this is 32 count mushroom slushy by fabric floor fabric flare <laughs> two over two full cross i did several more the first day i worked on this it was just white several lengths of white and this is blanc i believe everything else is a fancy floss but the white is just white then I went ahead and did some windows and shutters um, to go ahead and start filling that in. And I did some leaves as well. So there's, I think the leaves are finally done. I wanted to make sure those got done. There's some more trunk, there's a bench, two birds, and then the rest of the house. So we'll see what I can get done this, this week. Who knows, if I get super close to the finishing it after these two days here in August, maybe I will put it in for a day or two in September to just, just to get it done. Um, but if it still seems like there's an eons of, of time of stitching left, I'll go ahead and push it to October. So we'll see. Um, I was contemplating putting the, making the insides of the houses, this dark gold that was in the center of the flowers. And I decided not to, I put in two windows that way. It's called for black, a black roof and black window centers same color as the crows i don't think i have enough black uh fancy floss in the color that i chose for this so i am using a 
really dark brown, which I think is this brown that was in the birds. So the roof is brown and I d went ahead and did, it's hard to tell here, it just looks black on camera probably, but um, I used that same brown for the windows. So it's dark like the pattern intended, but it's not black. So the crow, when the crows are in, I think it'll be different enough from the house, which I like. But the gold seemed a little bit out of place. It wasn't quite right when I put those two windows in. I'm like, mm, I don't think so. So I took that out. And then I went with that mahogany color, I think is what I'm using. No, mahogany is for the tree trunk. Molasses. I'm doing molasses is the dark brown. Weak Style Works, I think. So that's that one. Probably get, I'm going to plan on two more days this week. See, see what I can get done. Chip away at that one. Then I worked for two days on Finery of Nature, which is a Whipco call for um, August. And I went ahead and put this in a project bag because it was kind of annoying to pull it out of all the materials out of this every time. So this is Finery of Nature by Dimensions. Dimensions Gold. And it is um, not too bad as far as types of stitches. It's got pretty much only full cross. There's like one blend. Um, there's a couple half stitches, but most of it's full cross, two strands, easy peasy. Where it gets a little bit more fancy is the details. So there's quite a few French knots. The um, most of the back stitching is gold metallic and couching. And even one of the French knots, I'm, I think I'm over here. One of the, the French knots I was gonna try, but then it was like the last thing I was doing was late at night. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm gonna pass. It was three strands of metallic and one strand of floss in a French knot. So that'll be fun. <laughs> um, I will tackle that next time. But I did take the time this time to go through and fix my floss. So now they're all pretty. I love them. Um, they come on these DM, the Dimensions kits, and I cut them all off and hole-punched them just to reuse these cards that came with it. I'm a big a big uh, supporter of using what you have rather than uh, gathering brand new materials. I've got those thread cards. I'm just going to use them. It'll be fine. It's way, way nicer than... I mean, I don't know what you're supposed to do with those, what, what Dimensions expects you to do with those, because once you take it off, like, wh where does it go? <laughs> so if you do a newer Dimensions kit, you always have to figure out something to do with your floss, because they can't stay on that card. It's very strange, but I saw that one time where you just hole punch the opposite side. It's right next to the number that is called for in the chart, so it's, it's easy enough to do it that way. So, and they're all pretty and nice now. Um, then I did a day on summer montage which we'll get to uh one more day today because i missed a day earlier in the month for the olympics stitching challenges and i'd like to give it a full four days here in august especially since this is the last day i'll be working on it before i switch my seasonal piece oh i forgot to bring that up um so I'm working up here in the rows still. This is by Pain Free Crafts, artwork by Janet Stever. And I got 230 stitches done on this yesterday. This is 28 count mushroom Lugana one over one full cross. Still working my way across the second row of 10 by 10 blocks picking symbols. So I did a little bit of dark orange and then some greens. I think that's pretty much it. So that's where I got to. I'm at 2.7%. It's very slow going because I feel like I, I tend to, I don't know, I don't have a ton of time on Sundays. It seems like, especially now, I'll probably get more now, uh, maybe in two weeks when football season starts, <laughs> NFL season. We have a family movie night when it's not football season and so that does take away some evening stitching time so there is that. But that'll be um, ending shortly. We might do one more movie because I don't think there's any real games this weekend. 
starts the following weekend. So anyways, I forgot one more thing because it wasn't specifically written out here, but I did work on my Shine Bright sampler, which is in the Bonnie and Camille Quilt Bee book. This is the colorway I'm doing, which is a little more, it's a different colorway than the one in the book. And you can find that on the Fat Quarter Shop website with the Ari floss. I I had I have been trying to do the Vuelta de España bike race with this, just like I did Tour de France. And as suspected, it doesn't really work very well during the school year. So there were Monday I put in one row, 35 stitches, and that's all I could do. I was supposed to do 182. Tuesday, I couldn't do any. I needed to do 167. I did zero. <laughs> I met my goal on Wednesday and Thursday and Saturday. Friday, I did 104 instead of 179, but that's all I had. Basically, if it gets late enough in the day that it's like, I think by eight, um, I I need to switch to my other project, my main piece or that I that I've chosen for the day. Um, any bonus stitching opportunities have completely ceased at that point because I, I want to give my other piece some time. So I didn't, I chose not to work on it at all on Sunday. I probably could, but again, because we have a family movie night, it's like, I don't really want to get it out because then I know I may not get very much time on summer montage. So I kind of have to weigh my choices all, a lot more during the school year because there's just, there's like parent meetings and you know, ferrying kids to extracurriculars and all the things. So I am I think I will stop attempting to do this bike race. And I kind of, I knew that going in that it was possible. It wouldn't work. The Tour de France might might keep working in the summer since it's in July, but I don't think I'll try this one or any other bike races that are during the school year. But I did some. So here is what I was able to accomplish this week. This is on... 40 count Morganite linen by Fiber on a Whim, one over two full cross. So I managed to finish the May chunk that we were, we were supposed to do in May. <laughs> it's now the end of August and I just finished it. And this is the beginning of the ju uh, June chunk. They were, they have the other chunks coming down here and then this long strip I think is the last chunk they want you to do. I'm gonna do that chunk of motifs after this one. So this will be, I'll finish this one next, but then I'll do this one after it because of the way I stitch. I don't want to do this last because then I'll be touching all of this finished work with my hand while I'm working on that at the end. So I'm going to do this one next and then come down and do these other ones. And there's one at the bottom horizontal chunk that I'll do at the very end instead. So that's that one. So I'm going to, I like working on it. I just don't have time to do more than one project a day during the school year. So I'm going to try to plug that in um, for a regular day here and there. And then at some point it will be my, like, it can be a focus for a finish piece and get two days a week until it's done kind of thing. Like the, those who sing is getting, um, cause it is on my list of things to finish this year. So even though it's officially a stitch along that should end in, I think October, <clears throat> if I get it done by the end of the year, I'll be happy. So, <clears throat> okay, I think we can launch into plans now. I have um, one more week of like regular stuff. So I'll be doing summer montage for one more day here in August. And then I need to do a, a second day on bear time stories. So I'll show you that. This is mini bear time stories artwork by randall spangler charted by heaven and earth designs <clears throat> this is a family piece there it is it's so little it was hiding <laughs> so i'm still working on a uh, dark blue that i was kind of color completing earlier this is my starting point 40 count birdle one over one half cross just like lollipop I am working on this dark blue. So I think there's more of it down here and I'll keep chipping away at that color, try to get that closer to a finish. I'm, I don't know how many are left on it, if it's possible to finish it, but um, 
And we have, I think, back to school night on that night at the high school. So probably won't finish another color, <laughs> but I'll do, do what I can on that one. Then I'll do two more days on those who sing and see what, see where that gets me. I'll kind of decide at that point if I want to work on it all, at all in September or if it still feels too far away and just bump it to October. Then the last two days of the month, I have planned my second Whipco piece for August is tea and books. And this is the whip that it is referring to, artwork by Bridget Ashwood, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is my original project. It's stitched on a silk weaver for doll called Days Gone By. And I'm stitching it one over one half cross, but I I have I mentioned last week that I think I'm gonna restart this. So here is my current whip. I haven't done anything to it yet. And I'm doing it one over one, half cross, and this is all, it's quite dark, which is what um, Dawn, Frosty, x -Stitch and I were common, noticing. There is a new version where Bridget Ashwood has her artwork now on Pain Free Crafts that looks like this. And we're going to restart this this weekend. So I'm, I haven't officially sorted out, I haven't fully taken out the background in my, in Pattern Keeper yet. And I don't know the size of everything, how it all matches up with mine. It's similar, but a little bit different in size to mine. Um, I'm kind of hoping I can keep the steam at least and frog the rest of this and keep this fabric because it's kind of a cool fabric. It's, you know, tans and oranges and splotchy. It's, it's a lot more splotchy than I'm used to, but it's kind of fun. There's a lot in here though, and it's an over one on 40 count. So it might be too hard to frog. If possible, I will try to salvage the steam and restart this on this fabric. If I can't, if it, if it turns out to be too much and it's not going well, I do have a piece of 40 count vintage country mocha. Probably put it this way. So it looks more like, like wallpaper or wood paneling or something. I'll, I'll use this and do this one over one half cross instead. So this is a good alternative if I can't get this to work. So I'd like to do this because this is what I envisioned with this piece. Um, but if the frogging ends up being too crazy, then I will, I, I can do this as a backup. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. I haven't had time this week to do anything more with this than what I had done when I talked to you last. <laughs> so um, partly because of that Shine Bright sampler getting my bonus time in the afternoons. I hopefully, if I'm not trying to get those stitches in, I can spend a little bit of time unpicking and taking background out and pattern keeper and all of that kind of stuff to get it ready to go for Friday. Here it is. It's looking for my sleep. So that's the plan for that one. Hopefully that works out nicely and it turns out beautiful. <laughs> and then Going into September, I'm planning to participate in AB Singo with the Magazine Monthly Challenge Cross Stitch Group on Facebook. They they do a bingo game every January and every September. January they have themes that kind of go with winter, and then in it's called Bringo, and then in September to kind of go along with the commencement of school starting, they do AB Singo. And since there's 26 letters in the English alphabet and only 25 squares, they take one letter out every year. This year, they're taking out the letter Y. So all the other ones, I like randomly distributed them on the board. And I haven't planned yet because we just got our WIPGO calls uh, for September yesterday. So I still need to fill out my board, but I'm planning to populate it with family pieces and Whipco pieces, and a new start for my birthday, and Castle Homecoming and Shine Bright, which are some, you know, focus on the finished pieces to give them a little more love. If I choose to keep working on those who sing to get it knocked out in September, that'll take a place in the board, one or two spots instead of those other ones. So we'll kind of 
wait and see how that goes depending on how I feel at the end of my rotation this week. So I will show you a few of those. I, I regularly show you my family pieces. So you saw two of them just now. Um, but I'm not going to show you those. And um, what was another one? Oh, I think I forgot to bring up Celtic Ladies Collage that has the four Celtic Ladies by Lavender and Lace. I forgot to bring that up, but you've seen that somewhat recently. <laughs> I think I might be able to more easily go back and find a before picture next time. I don't know what I'll be stitching on on Sunday because I'm going to go with the bingo game. So when the bingo game is called in the group, it'll tell me basically what to work on. So the first 25 days in September, I don't know exactly what will come up. So I was going to show you a few things to have starting points for especially my whip go pieces that um, you may not have seen in a while since I don't think I've worked on any of these this year yet. So, and my new start, I think I'll start with that. My new start is going to be Bees on, in a Flower, on a Flower by Ina Bedenko. I think I wrote this out. You, I think you can find this on mybobbin.com. And I, this is, I believe, what, she, what it's called on there. It's very detailed. I had another flower piece that's a little smaller, similar coloring, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to do this one and it's very pretty. I don't have any hopes that it'll be done soon. So that's why I was a little hesitant, but it's still pretty. And I have this fabric flare. It's very faint. You, yeah, you can kind of see there, there's a honeycomb pattern on it. I think this is, I don't know what this is, 28 or 32, but I'm going to do it on this, probably two over two. So yeah, that'll be fun. So if that gets called on the first, I'll start on the first. If it gets called anytime before the 20, like all the way through the 25th, it could be called. So it's technically a birthday start. It may not be on my birthday. <laughs> and I'm going to do a birthday start-ish combined with um, Dawn Frosty X-Stitch because she has a September birthday also. So we kind of like to start stuff together a lot on our birthdays. Tea and Books was a former birthday start. So we're working on it together this week. Um, so I'll, I'll be communicating with her. She has a different B piece that she's going to be starting. So we kind of have a theme together. So work on something B's in September. They can go along with my birthday <laughs> and Dawn's birthday. Um, and then my, what all do I have here? I think I, oh, <laughs> I just noticed I did, never showed you my progress on finery of nature. You probably all knew that, but here we go. I just showed you the kit and then I didn't show you the progress. So here is this one. This is where I got to on Finery of Nature. And this is 14 count black Ada that came with the kit, all the kit floss. Very pretty. So I stitched over to the, to the corner of this quadrant, though there will be the bird's nest in here. So a tiny bit of this came in. I think this was the center of these flowers was also in the nest. So I finished my string out there. I did some uh, French knots in these flowers. There's some p white French knots here, which I finished out in these flowers. Um, I think the French knots that are over here are also sprinkled around here. Those are the ones with the metallic and I almost did them, but then I'm like, you know what? It's too late at night to deal with four strands, three of which are metallic. <laughs> I'll do that next time. So this was fun though. It's, it goes really fast. Um, so it's nice. I actually am quite enjoyed it. So probably won't come out again until next year, but you know, I'm a not in a hurry. And that's that one. So now I have four projects left here. These are my whip go pieces for August. My two um, full coverages. I'll, I have my thing here. I have two whip go boards full coverage or full coverage company and non-full coverage. So this is the two from the full coverage board are Cherry Kitten by Artisy. This is the no background version and I'm stitching it on a fun pull stitches fabric called Dragon Shades. And here's my start. 28 count, one over one full cross. So very pretty fabric. I thought it looked a little bit like Sky since it's hanging in a cherry tree. I thought that would be 
appropriate. So it'll be very close margins, but it was too pretty to pass up. So I don't care about my margins. <laughs> so this is cute. I'll see. I'll give that two days throughout September, depending on how the, um, how I can get things to fit in my bingo board. These Whipgo pieces may get one, zero, one or two slots on the bingo board. If I get two spots on the bingo board, great. Their uh, Whipgo commitment is complete because all of my Whipgo pieces, I my goal is just two days on, on them. So if I can only squeeze them in once, they'll get a, a, a additional day at the end of the month because the 26th through the 30th is kind of bonus days that don't have uh, any bingo requirements. And then if I can't fit them in at all, they'll get a double double shift two days at the end of the month. So we'll see. My other full coverage piece is Sunny Birds, which is a fun one. It's very large. This is a max color, Oleg Gavrilov. So pretty. This is a Heaven and Earth Designs. And I'm doing mine 40 count cream linen, I think. One over one half cross. Working my way, I think the whole 10 by 10 squares across the top. So that's my starting point. I've done quite a few one over one half stitches. I don't know if I said that. So this is 40 count, super tiny. Um, probably keep just keep going across the top. I managed to hit some of these bushes, so that's why the bushes got started, which was fun. So I don't know what's beyond that, if it's just more sky or if we got something else going on, but that's that one. Two days here in September. And then my two non-full coverage projects. I did not bring their cover pages up, but you know them and you love them if you've been around Floss Tube for a while. So the first one is Twisted Band Sampler by Northern Expressions Needleworks. And here's mine. This is on the called for linen, which is bisque 32 count I believe and I'm doing my I'm doing using the DMC conversion that came with the pattern so it, it has a couple different sets of flosses so I'm doing the DMC looks like I have a cross stitch band to finish and then I can do some more specialty stitches so that will be fun can work on that some more I've seen quite a few people finish theirs since I have started mine and they started theirs after mine. <laughs> but that's okay. This is really fun to work on. At some point, this could be a focus for a finish project because it is very pretty and um, it's always fun to learn new stitches. So and then the other one is Stargazer by Mirabilia. This is one that I've done a color conversion and a fabric conversion. This is a hand dyed by me using double dose of denim writ dye. And I love how it turned out. The top half is done or top chunk, all the sky is finished. So now I'm just working on her and I have color converted her hair and her dress to be more like me and my colors. I think the front skirt might be called for everything else has changed. So I'll be working more on the dress. This one is a little harder to get into. I, I don't want to count very far because it's the fabric is so dark. So I do tend to stay close um, as I'm going. But hopefully I can make some nice progress on that in two days. So we'll see what I can fit in on my bingo board for all of these. How many I can get to in those first 25 days. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I have to show for you today. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful week, um, finishing out August. I might try putting together my annual whip parade this week, because I think the first couple weeks in September are going to be, well, actually September just seems a little full. So I think this week might actually be a good week to put that together. I have been doing it in, se in September the last few years because it's a better time of year for me than January because my Etsy shop is quite busy during January with predominantly temperature designs. 
<laughs> not a good time for me to do a whip parade with about a hundred projects. So I will be hopefully filming that throughout the week. I'm not sure when it will go up because I'll probably need to film it in chunks. I like to film it in, um, in categories. So I'll, I need to adjust my spreadsheet, make sure I have accounted for all my finishes and start new starts since my last one and, um, and get the categories ready. So we'll see. <laughs> that would be nice to do this week, but it will probably take several days to put together and then, you know, some time to edit. So I'm not sure when it'll go up, but that's kind of my plan to try to try to start working on that this week. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful week. Enjoy what you're working on and happy stitching. Bye.